Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patron, Biggie. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. Just a heads up for the upcoming open your trunk feature in the newest Tesla software update. It does require iPhone 11 plus, but a future update will extend it to Android users. Also in this update below the turn by turn list in your navigation, you'll now see a progress bar that changes as you drive closer to your destination or next stop. This bar also reflects live traffic conditions on your route if you have online routing turned on. Navigation will now show you at the top of your turn list if a faster route becomes available, it'll reroute you unless you decline before the option expires. There are new wiper controls. When you press the wipers button, you can now adjust wiper speed by moving the left scroll wheel up or down. And when you have the wiper set to a select speed, you can now use the wiper button to actually cycle through those speeds. As somebody who's been using the browser and YouTube TV while I wait in parking lots, this one was exciting. Now you can expand the browser to full screen when you're parked. There are a few others on the screen, but one of note, if you have no passengers in the back seat, now the rear touchscreen turns off when you shift out of park to reduce unnecessary energy use. You'll also have the option to hear a chime anytime you're approaching a speed camera. Availability in the US right now, unknown. The CNEV post gave us an update about Tesla's mega factory in Shanghai. Now we're looking at construction to begin in May and then mass production in quarter one 2025. This project has been pushed back a few times now. Originally the plan was to start construction in quarter three 2023 and then they were looking at mass production in Q2 of 2024. This factory is expected to have the same capacity as the one in Lathrop 10,000 megapacks per year or 40 gigawatt hours. Reuters loves recycling these Tesla India news items but they're confirming that sources are saying Elon is likely to announce a two to three billion dollar investment for a factory in India next week. Elon plans to meet with Narendra Modi on Monday and the sources are saying Elon is likely to give an investment figure for India without sharing details like a timeline or which state where the plant will be built. Elon is also likely to attend an event organized by the Indian government in New Delhi with space startups. Along those lines, after a few years of back and forth, Starlink has finally received an in principle approval from the telecom ministry in India. Thus, Starlink now awaits final vetting by the home ministry over certain security matters. Matters. The telecom ministry has imposed certain mandates, including the know your customer details and customer info of Indian users should not move outside the country. Also today, Say has made its investor website live for Tesla. So if you want to go submit some questions and vote for others, I'll have it linked below. Tesla has reintroduced 0% financing in Germany, the second time it's done so this year, just two weeks after relaunching it in China. In Germany, the 0% is for the Model Y long range all wheel drive and the performance variance. The maximum term for this deal is four years. In the US, Tesla is now offering a Model 3 lease rate of $299 per month, down from $329 before. This offer ends April 30th. This year through February, Tesla had spent $200,000 on advertising on X. There's people like Fred from Electrek out there that are criticizing Elon for pulling some talent from Tesla to help out with X, but to that I would just say, don't forget, Tesla was actually paid $1 million dollars from X for their services. Not only that, but the interplay between all of Elon's companies has been a huge competitive advantage for Tesla and all of the other companies. Plus, it gives the engineers a quick mental break to shift their focus to something else, maybe learn a new thing or two, and then go back to their normal routine. I did miss this one last night, but Elon did confirm what we were talking about yesterday. He said not quite betting the company, but going all out for autonomy is a blindingly obvious move. Everything else is like variation on a horse carriage. James Dalma said robotaxi Teslas will drive five times the miles of personal cars. That's five times displaced ice miles. Tesla can keep making personal cars, but every effort should be made to accelerate the introduction of and maximize the deployment numbers and usage of robotaxi vehicles. To that, Elon said this sounds about right. James also posted not going all out on autonomy right now would be dumb. And Elon said, absolutely. Again, just be prepared for the bifurcation of the Tesla community. Community. Some are going to believe in this vision and will think Tesla's going to solve it and others will not. Nate, an engineer at X said, I wish my Tesla had a sticky notes app to which Elon said, okay.
I don't even need a transition for this one because so many of you have been enjoying Soylent. It's made in America, full of vitamins and minerals, it's plant-based, it follows the science, and became popular via Silicon Valley as the world's most perfect food so coders and gamers would not have to take a break. Yes, they sponsor the channel, but I'm telling you, this stuff tastes like a snack, so you need to be careful here. The mint chocolate? So good. And before you even say it, in case you've seen the movie, Soylent is plants. It's plants, not people. Despite the hype that Soylent got from being the best meal replacement through a study of 40,000 people, Soylent has managed to keep their products affordable, which in an inflationary environment, I find admirable. As I've said before, 90% of what we consume should be whole foods, sourced well, organic, etc. but check the stats here. My go-to has become the Cafe Mocha. It has some caffeine and L-theanine for focus, 20 grams of protein, no artificial flavors, gluten-free, vegan, 2.83 potassium to sodium ratio, I'll repeat, look that up sometime, and only one gram of sugar per serving, plus over 38 other essential nutrients. I know taste is subjective, but I'm warning you these are incredibly good, and given the nutrition profile, in my opinion, it's a home run to enjoy every now and then. Plus, I really think it's a great option to keep you from reaching for something like ice cream or chips when those cravings hit. The first 500 people to use my link below and my code electrified30 will get 30% off their first subscription. The link is below. Enjoy. This morning, Tesla released a preliminary proxy statement for the upcoming annual shareholder meeting that's going to be held June 13th in Austin, Texas at 3.30 Central Time. The event will be online as well, so if you were a Tesla stockholder at the close of business on April 15th of this year, within the next week or two, you should be getting a letter from your broker with next steps on how to vote. As you see on the screen, there are 12 proposals in total that are up for voting, three of which are actually stockholder proposals. The board has recommended voting for the first five proposals and against the last seven. Numbers three and four, however, stand out amongst the rest as three is Tesla moving from Delaware to Texas and then four is ratifying Elon's 2018 compensation plan. If you do wanna educate yourself with this multi-hundred page document, it's incredibly in-depth and Tesla was called out for not providing and not being forthcoming enough with certain relationships and disclosures and meetings and planning. Well, they did everything they could to rectify that with this document. It's gonna be way too much for most people, so my advice would be look at the proposals and then pick the few that mean the most to you, and then if you do want to learn more or you need info about how you wanna cast your vote, use the table of contents to click around and get to that specific part. As always, you should definitely vote your shares as you see fit. I just feel obligated to say this. If somehow the vote does not go in Elon's favor and this 2018 comp plan does not get ratified, that leaves major question marks for Elon's future at Tesla. And not only that, but there could be some major financial implications as you're about to find out. And because I'm still seeing people out there that for some reason don't think this is true, here it is in plain language in the document. Because the Delaware court second guessed our decision, us voters, Elon has not been paid for any of his work for Tesla for the past six years. That plan was 100% performance based. It was all stock options and all of those options right now have been taken away from Elon. Just so you know, Tesla formed this special committee to put together this document. It was originally going to be Kathleen Wilson Thompson and Joe Gebbia, but Gebbia recused himself and then Tesla brought on a few advisors. I spent a lot of the day reading through this just so you could understand some of the most important points. Points. On Tesla changing its incorporation from Delaware, the special committee initially considered all U.S. states as well as the possibility of incorporating outside the U.S. After narrowing things down to Texas and Delaware, the committee said there were three differentiating factors. Texas is Tesla's home state. They, of course, have plenty of operations in the state. Texas statutory law on corporate constituencies would better align with Tesla's mission-driven culture. And Delaware has an established and respected business court and the largest body of corporate case law in the country, whereas Texas just created a business court. The committee balanced these considerations and concluded that in its business judgment, it's 
it's in the best interest of Tesla and all of its stockholders for the company to reincorporate in Texas. They also concluded based on the advice of its financial and academic advisors that there was no convincing evidence that reincorporating in Texas would affect Tesla's market value. It's minor, but relocating to Texas will save Tesla $250,000 per year in franchise tax payments. On Texas having less established case law, they said Texas's silence in these areas does not mean Texas law is or will be meaningfully different from Delaware law. Texas courts often look to Delaware law to fill gaps in Texas law. One advantage of Tesla moving to Texas, according to the committee, was that home state incorporation means the legislators and the judges making corporate law and the juries deciding fact disputes in corporate cases are drawn from the community in which the company operates. That's important because the local decision makers in Texas will have a deeper understanding of Tesla's business. They also said that Texas, unlike Delaware, has an express statutory provision that would allow, though not require, Tesla's directors and officers to consider the company's mission in exercising their fiduciary duties. So as many were expecting, a bit more flexibility and understanding being in Texas. They said scholarship demonstrates a high level of reversal rate for decisions of the Delaware Court of Chancery. This focus on precise facts and circumstances means Delaware decisions may be less predictable for an innovative company like Tesla. <laughs> you don't say. One of the main risks with Tesla moving to Texas was indeed Delaware having much more extensive case law. As again, Texas's business courts were just created and will not start hearing cases until September 2024. But again, these Texas courts can always lean on established precedent in Delaware. And then if you really want to get into the weeds of the differences between Delaware and Texas, they laid out this chart that goes on and on for pages. For this to be approved, they'll be looking for the affirmative vote of a simple majority of the outstanding shares. And then we have proposal four, which talks about Elon's 2018 comp plan. We've been over this in the past, but if you need a brush up, it has all of the information there for you. If Elon's comp plan is ratified, then all of the deficiencies and any wrongs found by the Delaware court in connection with that performance plan should be cured. The 303.9 million options issued to Elon pursuant to that plan will be restored to Elon compensating him for his nearly six years of service to Tesla. And Tesla may be able to argue that the plaintiff's attorneys are not entitled to that $5 billion of the attorney fee award. The special committee decided to fully stand behind Tesla's board as they did not substantively reevaluate the amount or the terms of Elon's 2018 plan, AKA they're asking for ratification of the exact same plan with no changes. This part's really important. The special committee noted that dozens of institutional stockholders have unprompted told the company's investor relations team they disagree with Tornetta's invalidation of the 2018 plan. Seven institutional stockholders, including four of the top 10, felt strongly enough to seek a meeting with the board chair and raise the issue. Having four of the top 10 biggest institutional investors effectively already on board with Elon's 2018 comp plan is going to go a long way toward getting Tesla that majority vote. And shout out to Alexandra and Amy and everybody else behind this movement. They put in the letter more than 6,000 individuals claiming to be stockholders owning more than 23 million shares, sent unsolicited letters and emails to the board or to the court supporting the reinstatement of Elon's plan. The special committee found this stockholder feedback powerful and persuasive. The committee held an interview with Elon and Elon said he wants to be treated fairly and with respect. He said he feels he worked extraordinarily hard and made many sacrifices to meet the terms of the deal. He made it clear that his ownership interest in Tesla is also very meaningful to him and he confirmed the 2018 comp plan had been motivating and that ratification of it would motivate him to continue devoting time and energy to Tesla. And don't forget, if Elon gets these options back and then exercises them, he still has to hold those shares for a period of five years. The committee was cognizant of the possibility that its re-domestication decision could be wrongly perceived as being made in direct response to the Tornetta opinion and with the intent to award Elon compensation in a different jurisdiction that he could not get in Delaware. That seems like a savvy move by the committee to hold the votes now to avoid that criticism. Now, here's where things get serious and we really have to think about the future of Tesla if this goes south. If it's not ratified, Tesla may need to negotiate a replacement comp plan with Elon and that could likely take substantial time and 
light of all of the criticisms of the 2018 plan. In light of the committee's interview with Elon, they said any new plan would need to be of a similar magnitude to the 2018 plan. And listen to this, when talking about a hypothetical replacement plan for the one in 2018, they said for illustrative purposes, this new grant of 300 million fully vested options, the functional equivalent of what Elon had before that Delaware decision, could potentially result in an accounting charge in excess of $25 billion with a B, depending on certain timing and valuation factors. Any replacement compensation plan would likely have to be less than 10% of the size of the 2018 award to avoid a new accounting charge for compensation expense that's greater than the reversal of the 2018 charge. Translation, if Tesla has to come up with a replacement plan for the 2018 award, it's not going to go well for Elon. And wrapping this up, the ratification could also be challenged in these novel circumstances by stockholders both before and after the vote. So unfortunately, even a favorable ratification vote by stockholders may not fully resolve this matter. The committee could not predict with certainty how a vote to ratify this plan would be treated under Delaware law under these novel circumstances. Right here, the ratification could get subsequently overturned and the Delaware court or a different one may find the ratification is not fair to stockholders. I'm not a lawyer, but reading through a lot of this document, I feel like it would be very difficult to argue that the shareholders were not actually informed this time around with this document. They also clarified right now, there is no such new compensation plan planned by Tesla. Just one more time for good measure, Elon has not received compensation in nearly six years years. Honestly, how would you feel if you sacrificed for a company for six years and then the shareholders decided to vote against you getting compensated for that time when originally everybody voted for it? That paired with the fact that Elon still wouldn't have the level of ownership he feels comfortable having at Tesla to develop AI at the company is not good for Tesla's future. This is really only step one in a process that may take the next 12 to 18 months to actually come to a final solution. Tesla and the board are officially appealing the Delaware decision, but that's going to take time to play out. This cloud of uncertainty will most likely linger into 2025, but for now, we just have to focus on step one, which is the voting. Tesla does have a new website, supportteslavalue.com, covering some of the main highlights from that proxy document. I'll have this linked below. Be on the lookout for that communication from your broker on the next steps on how you can vote. And then if you're in Europe, I'll have this thread below with some information on what you'll need to do to actually be able to vote your shares. I'd love to know how Leo plans to vote as he just boosted his share count to 27.6 million, a cool $4.3 billion. Again, definitely vote your shares as you see fit, but I am not going to be shy about sharing where I stand. Don't forget, Elon helped generate a 10x return in Tesla stock from the beginning of 2019 through 2023. And that's after the Tesla stock underperformance as of late. For all of that work and all of that shareholder value created, Elon has received $0. In my humble opinion, the sooner we can get Elon paid and a new compensation plan may be created once Tesla is able to move into Texas, then deal solely with the Texas courts. The faster that all happens, the better things will be for for Tesla stock. Just one day after Boston Dynamics retired the hydraulic Atlas, today they unveiled a fully electric version. And as we speculated, this one is designed for real world applications. Hyundai is the majority owner of Boston Dynamics and they will be building the next generation of automotive manufacturing capabilities. This will serve as a perfect testing ground for the new Atlas applications. This coming from a press release from Boston Dynamics. It's also somewhat ironic the prior version of Atlas was not a good apples to apples comparison with Optimus, but it sounds like the new electric version that has an automotive based future may actually be. Boston Dynamics also has Spot and Stretch, which they've already made deployments of, and they said similar to those rollouts, they'll be partnering with a small group of innovative customers, starting with Hyundai, to test and iterate Atlas applications over the next few years. The prior version of Atlas could already lift and maneuver a wide variety 
of heavy irregular objects and they're continuing to build on those existing capabilities and they're now exploring several new gripper variations. So far, BD has over 1500 deployments of their spot robot. We don't know a whole lot about BD on the software AI side, but they were talking about reinforcement learning and computer vision. And they said they recently launched their Orbit software, which provides a centralized platform to manage your entire robot fleet. As we've been talking about, the humanoid space is heating up very quickly. And yes, this video is impressive. The range of motion seems great. I still wanna see what those hands can do. This one is for ICE vehicles, but the phantom braking is not just a Tesla problem. Honda is apparently struggling with this as well. NHTSA has received over 1,200 complaints and there were 50 reported injuries and 31 crashes. The executive chair of Ford just said, the lack of visibility into policy is a major challenge for the auto industry. Our planning timeframe as a company is a lot longer than election cycles. The problem is when we're whipsawed back and forth, we can't turn on a dime. This yet another challenge for legacy auto during an election year, having that extra level of uncertainty given that Biden and Trump are kind of opposites when it comes to EVs. As of today, Today, Rivian is starting a new round of layoffs, something they did earlier this year in February. Rivian said this was a difficult decision, but a one to support our goal to be gross margin positive by the end of the year. It's still unknown the scale of the reduction this time around. They also said until the end of April, their R1T and R1S orders will include a complimentary stealth PPF valued at $5,000. Rivian also confirmed the tri-motor variant and a new premium trim level for the 2025 versions of the R1S and R1T. To the Rivian layoff news, Elon said, inevitable. Google Maps is now releasing some EV charging features of their own. They'll basically be helping drivers find good places to charge and not only see them on the map, but understand how to navigate to certain sites that can be hard to find. Users will be able to leave a review of each site, which would actually be a pretty sweet feature for Tesla, especially if you could sort by most recent. Tesla stock closed the day at $155.45, down 1.06%, while the NASDAQ was down 1.15%. It was a lower volume day, trading about 12 million shares below the average volume the past 30 days. Don't forget, check out Soylent linked below if you're interested. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Please like the video if you did. You can find me on X linked below. And a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.